Welcome to the lab. My name's Cory, and in this video, I'm going to attempt to paint a model using only an airbrush. This is a project that I've always wanted to do, simply because I want to get better at using the tools that I have in order to speed up the process or learn to do different techniques. And I was actually quite pleasantly surprised. I picked this larger dragon mini that I got out of, I think it was a Kickstarter for Albino Dragon playing cards. I don't know if you remember those, but this was their model that they printed of their logo. So I've had this kicking around and I picked it out of a box from the move and I was like, you know what? It's pretty cool mini. I'll paint it up. But I thought it was also the perfect mini to use to try to test airbrushing on. See, I've had the Masters airbrush. I think the model specifically is the G22 model for about a year now. I got it for my 30th birthday. Over a year now. Yeah. I got it for my 30th birthday. It's It worked great. It's done its job. It's very useful at priming and everything. But it clogs a lot. And I didn't know at the time. Um, my girlfriend's family were amazing. They bought this, the whole compressor and everything for me. So, I mean, it was an expensive gift. But it clogs a lot. Like, I, I try to put super thin down to paint through it and I would have to stop every like five ten minutes just to unclog it clean it all out and everything and the inside of the cup I don't know whether it's because of inferior manufacturing or different designs but the inside of the cup actually has like a huge recess it's like the cup was attached to the top of the airbrush so you have this circular area down here where the paint actually can sit and then there's the huge cup of storage above and so while you're spraying everything gets clogged down there it just sits there and then whenever you switch colors you have to basically tear the whole thing apart just i i feel like I, those army movies where people tear apart their rifles and stuff with this thing so this is this has done work for me and it will continue to do more work for me. I'm going to use it for mostly priming and varnishing now. I saw on Amazon that, I don't know if it's still going on, you should check it out if you can. Badger airbrushes are like half off for some reason. They're half the price they normally are. So I bought for like 70 something dollars and then 80 something dollars the Patriot and the Sotar. So I got both for basically the price of the Sotar 2020, maybe a little less than. And if you look at the inside of the cups on these airbrushes, I don't I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up at all, you're so far away. The cup goes down into the airbrush itself. So while you're cleaning this, all you really will have to clean is the top of the needle that's in there and then empty out the cup and you're good. You've basically emptied out all of the paint. And that, in order to empty out all the paint, you literally have to remove the needle in order to be able to uh, clean off the bottom of the tube that the cup is attached to on top. I don't know if that's part of the issue, but as soon as I tried out the Patriot, they're, they're almost like worlds apart. If you've used that long enough and you get frustrated, as soon as you start spraying with this, you see the nice, it's just an even spray. There's not a couple of spots that have larger clumps or anything. And just, oh, huge, 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 huge difference. The thing that I am not used to yet is between the Patriot and the Sotar, apparently the needle size is different. And what I should do is I should get some different kits, but it didn't feel super, super different than this one. I'm assuming that this will hold smaller needles better. And it did let me hit smaller areas. So, I mean, there is a difference. But as somebody who has very little experience, I can definitely recommend the Badger. I can see why people say this is like their main go-to uh, for, for most things, because this has such a minor difference at least from my initial experience in being able to hit tiny, 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 tiny areas. You, I mean, you have to be super gentle on pulling back. I obviously need more experience, so I'm kind of talking out of my butt a little bit here. This should be, do, be able to do most things, including most moderately small areas. I'd expect once I get better, I could hit super tiny areas with this. I did actually paint the eyes of this dragon with this airbrush so i mean that can go to show you how small it is but you can see there's some overspray which is why i went with a fluorescent blue to make the eyes look a little glowy so i definitely learned a lot of how different airbrushes can react and i also found not all adapters are made equal 
So I originally got these in and I was super excited. I've been actually working on this project for, gosh, almost a month now. And it's it's been a, a quite a bit of process. So I got these in and I was super excited. I switched them out. One of the things I bought was a quick connect set so that A, the airbrush can swivel on the hose without twisting everything, which is really helpful. Or that's a huge difference alone on like the pressure on the threads and your wrist when you're trying to move around without spilling. And I definitely have learned, by the way, about moving around. Don't move around. Maybe just like wobble your hand side to side some, do a little bit of this kind of action maybe, but don't try to reach around because you're going to end up doing that and the paint is just going to go all the amount of times I have had to clean this master's airbrush off from just paint that I've accidentally spilled out ridiculous move the model instead reposition it based upon where you want to be and if you need the models tall and you like need to get underneath just raise raise it all up it's, it's the easiest move the model not your hand as much but anyways I put this quick connect on lifesaver this thing is super great just dump your stuff out clean out the cup real quick swap out to another brush pour in your new paint fabulous issue i had was while this quick connect works and it works with different adapters the adapter that came with the set only went up on the badger airbrush like two threads the original one i had i have it in a drawer for both of the airbrushes i used when I was using it, there was one or two times where I pulled back or I were I was cleaning out the cup. So you know you dump it in the water and you go in and you you have to wipe it with a cloth. Somehow there was just a little bit of pressure on the adapter and it pulled it right off the threads. I was really worried because I think at one point I actually saw a little bit of metal come off. And I was like, uh-uh, no, not on my brand new fancy airbrushes. It did it for each of them. I thought maybe it was just like the one airbrush. I tried to screw it onto another one. It felt right. I put on some Teflon tape, but it did it again. It, the Teflon tape and the combination of just how far the adapter went up was absolutely miserable. So I found another adapter online and I'll try to find the link and I'll link these to anybody who wants uh, to get a, a quick connect adapter that apparently goes with just your average. This was like super cheap, found it on Amazon, but the fact that it came, and while this side is great and the Masterson's part that comes in the kit is, is fabulous, it all works together great, the Badger adapter in that kit, Garbo. Get this, this one, this is a little more expensive. I think this is like a $5 adapter. I bought two of them and this whole kit was a total of like $10 and it came with four different adapters. So definitely buy the more expensive adapter for the Badger stuff. This goes all the way up on the threads and even to the point where I didn't put Teflon tape on this one. I probably should. I'll probably take it apart and put Teflon tape just in case, but there's no air leakage, which is amazing to me. But yeah, so that whole issue of the different adapters caused this video, which is supposed to be my last video, to be put on hold because these adapters, when they were supposed to be shipped out, didn't quite happen, which is, is partially my fault. I ordered it on like a Thursday and then it was supposed to be shipped out and packed and then gone and it was supposed to arrive like Tuesday, Wednesday of the following week. Didn't arrive. Finally got an update on like Thursday or Friday in the afternoon. Hey, your adapters aren't going to come in until the following Wednesday. My video was due that Tuesday. So I was keeping busy as you saw in my last video. I made some magnetic stuff. So I, you know, I solved the issue of having to switch projects. But it was a, it was a little bit frustrating. I'll, like I said, I'll get put all the links for this in the description below so you can find what you want for your own airbrush setup. I highly recommend picking these up off of Amazon right now if they're still like half off their normal price. Amazing. They, I mean, they come in a solid case, you stow them away. I <clears throat> need to look into learning how people go about finding different needles. I want to learn what kind of different needle needles you can put into these things. I think this mini turned out pretty dang well, uh, especially for, I maybe have two, three hours worth of work on this, and that's including cleaning the airbrushes, priming, like, this went together super fast. And for tabletop play, just quickly put it on my shelf. I think it looks pretty great. And if I were to whip this out in a role-playing game or something, or some kind of war game for an NPC mini to fight or a boss battle, I think 
this looks fantastic. It's not super high detail. This is no Radicar the Wolf that I painted. The amount of detail that the airbrushes were able to pick up and the amount of time I spent on a model this size, I'm really happy with the result. So let's get into how I did that. And there's the model. So the first thing I did, of course, with any model that you're gonna paint, give it a nice bubble bath. I don't know if I've talked about it before, but I bought this travel toothbrush. It is the handiest thing. I tuck it away in my little um, paintbrush kit. Take it out whenever I need it. One of the tips of the wings broke off. Not a big deal. I was just showing you that I glued it back on because on the end you'll see the little area where the super glue and stuff was. These are the airbrushes that I'm using on this project. Masters G22, I got the Patriot 105, and the Sotar 2020. And I bought these little quick connect adapters to go on them. If you'll notice on the Badger one, it does not go up all the way. That's what I was talking about there, the thread. You see all of the Teflon tape I had to put on there to keep it from leaking. Ugh. Put some primer in, I had Vallejo black airbrush primer and then of course I thinned it down a bunch because that's something else you can do to make that airbrush primer stretch even farther. Not a ton, but you want to put some thinner in it anyways. You can see there the bubbles in it I already had to uh, backflow the front because it had clogged a little bit. And that's one of the issues I was talking about with the Masters, is it just, it likes to clog a lot. I was actually really excited to get this mini painted. I've had it sitting around for a long time. And I'm going to show you real quick my exact process for cleaning this brush, simply because this video is about me experimenting with airbrushes, and I wanted to show what it was like to really have to clean a brush. And this is the Masters. I had to clean this like this pretty much every time. You can use water. I have some airbrush cleaner I bought for like $10 to $15, a huge bottle of it. So I just use it liberally. But I don't think that's really needed unless you have a major issue. I love using Q-tips. It's much easier than wadding up a paper towel and getting in there. I'll use the paper towel to get rid of huge chunks. Um, yeah, Definitely backflow whenever you're cleaning, like doing a major cleaning on the airbrush because there's going to be pigment chunks that get up into the, the tip that don't get sprayed out and you want to shoot them back so that you can knock them out of the front of the nozzle so it's nice and clean and smooth. I always take the needle out of this thing because it's almost impossible to clean it fully without doing so. I put some airbrush cleaner on a paper towel and then I pull it back towards the tip. I never obviously go tip front because you don't want to bend the tip of the needle. <coughs> and then I make, it, make sure I get in there with the front. You can see all the black that I just pulled out of the front of that. And then I squirt a little bit of airbrush cleaner on that and I clean off the front tips. I don't know what you want to call them, the nozzles. Different nozzles that you can screw on the front. Make sure to clean off the fronts and backs of those. And that's how I would clean a whole airbrush. I didn't have to take apart either of the Badger airbrushes to clean the inside of that cup and to make sure that it was continuously spraying. I just sprayed until the water came out clean. I backflowed a couple times to make sure that it was clean backflow. They were both perfectly okay. The Masters Airbrush, you cannot get away with that. If you want that thing to work correctly next time you use it or when you switch colors, you're pretty much gonna have to clean it like I cleaned it. You can get away with, um, here I'm just mixing some purple. I'm showing you how I thin it down. I put some, you can use water. I have the airbrush thinner because I was trying to use something to glue pigment before and I have a bit of flow aid so just thin down. Oh, that's a Chimera Indigo I think it was or whatever the purple color in the Chimera set is. But as I was saying with the uh, Masters you can get away with switching colors um, if you're okay with blending them a little bit as long as they're thin enough but know that it 
you can't just keep swapping. Eventually something's gonna clog. It's at least mine does that way. So I knew immediately that I wanted to do a magenta color on this dragon. I probably should have painted it, uh, based it white, but I made all of the shadows everywhere that dark purple. And it doesn't show well on the black, but I think it worked really well by the time I got to the end of it. Here you can see what the magenta color looked like by the time I was done with the dragon. Also the chimera color and uh, ink. Use a lot of ink to really bring it out after I put down the chimera color. <coughs> and here I'm putting on the gold on all the horns and stuff. And you'll notice I'm not doing any masking, which was intentional on my part. I knew there would be overspray, but I wanted to see how much there was going to be. I wanted to know what it was going to be like if I never masked anything. And just so that I knew how to improve, I could see what things worked better to hit the right spots and what things didn't. I primed the eyes and then I primed, uh, primed quote unquote, it wasn't primer, this is just white paint. Um, but I hit everything lighter so that it wouldn't be so dark and then I hit the base with this uh, gray for the rock, make it look like ground texture. I didn't put any texture on the thing. There's a big enough rock. I like the, base, the rest of the base being clean. And golden flares and blue for the eyes. There you go! As you can see, nothing fancy. The thing about airbrushing is the cost up front. And that's why I was recommending to pick these up while the price is so low, at least right now. Because they can pay for themselves alone in priming. So a normal can rattle can from GW, if you get the rattle can shaking aerosol primer, costs about $17. And even if you were to not do that and get a cheap like plastic priming paint can from Walmart, that's seven dollars. I used a can and maybe a half to prime these two towers. So if you're doing terrain, like that's already seventeen dollars gone to prime like a couple of like a big chunk of area. And if you paint minis at all, I know a bunch of my friends, they'll go through like a squad and they'll use like a can on the squad or maybe like a couple of squads. And I'm talking like a squad of like 20 people. So you do like 40 models, can is probably gonna be gone and all of that. Since I have bought airbrush primer, which this one bottle of black cost me $17, I've used, including on a bunch of different terrain that I've done and the few minis I've painted so far, this much of the bottle. This is gonna last me forever. And I also bought a white bottle. So I, it's already saved itself in buying the bottles. Like I've probably already saved myself 50, 60 bucks in just buying aerosol, aerosol cans. And if you count that against the price of the airbrush, in the long run, buying an airbrush and priming with an airbrush alone is going to buy you back the cost that you invested in the airbrush to begin with. It's just a lot up front, but over time, as long as you continue with the hobby, it's going to save you money. So, highly recommend. Not a super fancy video, but if you have any airbrushing tips, or like I said, I'm looking into buying different needle kits for these, please drop a link or comment in the description below. I could really use the help and information. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to catch the next one. And until next time, experiment with your hobby.